Hello folks, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about improving the performance of your EC2 instances. Typically you will have an EC2 instance and you have multiple levers to improve the performance either by having more CPU, more memory, but today we are going to talk about the network segment of your EC2 instance. Typically you will configure your network to auto negotiate the speed, that is fine, but how about the size of the package that is being sent between your source and your receiving servers. And especially if you are traveling or sending your package through the internet, you will be able to achieve a maximum of only 1500. Uh, that is the maximum transmission unit most of the switches and routers in the internet support today. But what if, if your EC2 instances are applications within the same subnet or within an availability zone within your region or within your control, then you can take a advantage of a feature that Amazon offers you by default on certain instances. That is, you can send a bigger packet. For example, you can see this uh, image that is at the bottom. If you're setting your MTU, that is the maximum transmission unit as 1500, to send the same amount of data, you need to send six packets. But when you send it at uh, MTU of 9000, you just send a big jumbo packet. So basically you're sending more information in one packet for the other server. Where this is helps is if you have a placement group or a group of instances where low latency is required and high performance and you want to send more packets per second through your network, then those applications can significantly get a performance boost by taking advantage of this. So how do I know whether this is possible in my account or how do I measure this performance difference? Uh, to help us, I have written a simple GitHub article and in this GitHub article, I have also attached a CloudFormation template. What this template is going to do is, is it is going to set up a custom VPC and a couple of instances in the same subnet. We are going to check what is the network size that is configured. By default, it will say that it is 9000, but if you are going to send it over the internet, you will find that the packets are going to go through only at 1500. So we are going to create a very big file in one server. Let us say there are two servers, server A and server B. Let us say server A has a big file of 2 GB and we are going to copy that file from server B and see how many packets are we receiving when we are setting the MTU at 1500 and how many packets we are receiving when the MTU is set at 9000. All the commands that are required and all the scripts and information that is required to do this is in this GitHub article. If you go down, you can see here how to check the MTU and uh, how to create a huge file and how to copy them over. Either you can copy them over rsync or SCP. We can use either of the mechanisms. All we need to do is just update the IP address of one of the servers and check for the received packets. When I did this test with a 20 GB file with a bigger machine or a different machine, I saw close to about 6x performance improvement. So basically the MTU of 1500, this many packets were sent, but when we are doing it at 9000, a lot lesser packets were sent. So this is the template. I've already copied it to my uh, um, S3 bucket so that we can launch this template. But if you're going to do this, what I would uh, recommend you guys to do this is, uh, there's a key name and uh, that key name has to be changed to your key in your account. Uh, so this is the key I have in my account. So I have updated both the instances with this key. Just go ahead and change this value and upload it to your cloud formation. You can see here that a couple of instances coming up. Let me refresh my screen and we should uh, see our uh, instances coming up here anytime soon. So these are the two instances. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to name one of them as A and name the other one as B and let us go ahead and connect to this server. So I've opened two tabs. I'm just going to connect to this one. So this terminal is going to be my server B and this terminal is going to be my server A. So before doing all that, let us see what is the default MTU. How do I check that? We can use the trace path command. So I'm just going to say trace path. So let's just keep it like this for a moment. And you can see here the first ping route is to the local host and it is going at 9001. But once it tries to reach the actual destination, it goes to 1500. So this is going to do it multiple parts and trying to find out what is the best optimal route and give us a summary of what is the maximum MTU it can achieve. 
So as you can see here, it was uh, able to reach the maximum MTO of 1500 only. So what exactly are the current values that are set? So we can find out out by these commands. So I'm setting it up as 1500 now so that we can see the difference between when we set it as 1500 and set it as now 9000. So basically we'll create a big file on the second server with something like a size of 2 GB and then we will try to copy the file from this server to this one and then we'll measure the brackets that are received. Just go ahead and connect to this one. So the command to create a big file is this one instead of 20 GB I'm just going to make it shorter so that we can quickly see the results. I'm just going to copy or create a single file of uh, 2 GB and uh, we are done here we don't have to do anything else. The next step is copying this 2 GB file which is called as test IMG. So if I go and go ahead and do test IMG here you can see here there's a new file of 2 GB and just going to copy that from here now. And the command to copy it also is there in the GitHub. You don't have to worry about anything. Just go ahead and run this command. And basically you just need to change the IP address of the second server here. And remember we also need the private key that is uh, the key that is needed to copy to connect to the server. So I'll just copy it uh, while freezing my screen so that I don't expose the private key. And then you, we need to execute this command. Just going to put it here so that we can change the IP address first. So this is the IP address that we need to use. So next step is uh, copying my private key. So now I have copied my private key here. So we are all set. And right now if I do an LSFNL for and test IMG file, we should not be finding anything here. So once we co add copied with this one, we can see the file has been copied and also how many packets were received. This is the last command and it will show us and by a number that will tell us how many packets were used to copy that file. So let us say S yes so that it can connect. Oh, we, we forgot to change, I forgot to change the permissions of that uh, key file. So that is why we are getting an error. I'm just going to quickly change that. And yeah, there we go. We started copying. As you can see here, it took about uh, 1.5 million packets. I'm just going to copy this and put it here so we can easily quickly compare it. And if I do an LSF and L for a test image, you can see here there's a file now. So basically I'm just going to remove it so that we can copy it again. And I'm just going to run the previous command. Before that, we need to change the MTU size to 9000. So this command is going to set the MTU value to 9000. And this command is going to confirm that the value is set as 9000. So we have confirmed that. Let us go ahead and execute our script. That is basically we are going to copy the file again and see how many packets are needed to copy this. As you can see here, it just took about 264,000 packets only to send the same file uh, when you are setting the MTU at 9000. So this is a very easy and quick way of improving the performance of your application. So it is not only your network, you just need to make sure your application also can leverage the MTU value so that it can be send bigger packets and the receiving application should not be overwhelmed by the additional amount of data it is coming in. It also should be configured to process the additional information it is receiving. So take advantage of this built-in feature that is given to you in most of the instances in Amazon and uh, have a delighting experience for your customers by enhancing your application performance. If you have any problems in trying this in our account, go ahead and put them below. I'll look into it and help you solve them. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.